Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are doing a new installment in the Luxury Will I Buy It series. But here on my channel, we like to add a little French twist. So for collections we want, we say oui. And for collections we don't want, we say non merci. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. As many of you know, I'm a makeup artist and also esthetician, and I now offer an online beauty consulting service. This is where you and I chat one-on-one -on -one about your beauty concerns. Sometimes you may already have all of the products that you need, but you may just be using them in the wrong order or the wrong techniques. If I do make product recommendations, you know that my advice is unbiased because I don't work for any brand in particular. I work for myself. So when you make a consultation appointment, you are booking me for my expertise, my knowledge, and my years of experience working in sales, working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, and you just get to pick my brain about any and all concerns. And I now offer gift cards. So if you wanna make an appointment for yourself or purchase a gift card, click the link in the description box down below. Okay, so to get into today's Will I Buy It, I'm gonna go ahead and include a list of all of the bloggers, Instagrammers that I used in today's video, and I'm gonna go ahead and reference them in the description box down below. I highly recommend following these beauty news accounts because it's really just the best way to stay informed about what's coming up on the horizon. So first up, we have a new collection here coming up sometime in the future from Dior, and this is their summer release, their summer collection. So here we have the whole kit, the entire production from top to bottom. There's a lot going on. So we can see a mascara. It's either going to be a waterproof mascara or possibly a tinted one. I'm guessing waterproof because summer it's hot and warm. It looks like we're going to have another one of those dual-sided eyeliners. I think this one is a double eyeliner, like one liner for like a cat flick felt liner and one that's more of a classic eyeliner end. We have two beautiful highlighters. There's a pink and there's a peach. I have several of these Dior Skin highlighters, these luminizers. They're all really wonderful. The problem is I never actually go through, I never hit pan on a highlighter. So I probably will skip everything that I've mentioned so far just because, I don't know, I mean, I like the eyeliners, I like the highlighters. It's just not something I go through that much. Then we have three new of these balm blushes. I bought one in the spring release. I probably won't get one, like a new one, because I have the one already and I don't really reach for it. Maybe when it's like warmer out and I want like more of a glowy natural look. I'm interested to see how intense or how opaque these will be because the one that I have is like a really light flush of pink. It's more of a glossy highlighter than anything else. And then of course the centerpiece here, we have two beautiful warm toned palettes. Now, straight off the bat, if I just look at these really quickly, they do remind me of previous collections. I think of the Terra collection from two summers ago. It just looks like a very traditional summer release from Dior, very warm, metallic, shimmery. It kind of reminds me of what I'm wearing today as eyeshadow. I'm just really curious to see how these swatch. What's the formula? Are these satin? Are these shimmer? Are these going to be the beautiful, buttery new formula? You know, if I look at both of these palettes, there's one with a white center and one with like a peachy center. I'm more interested in the peachy center one. It just looks like it's more intense, maybe a bit darker, but it's hard to tell from these promo photos right away. And then of course we have a lot more of these beautiful lip glosses. I'm tempted by these glosses because I have the new Dior Addict Stellar Gloss Formula and it's great. It's just the perfect amount of sticky and gloss. So I would definitely get, I think the more peachy, peach color lip gloss. Um, again, I'll see the swatches in real life, but if I do get this collection, I'm not going to purchase everything that I see. I'm just going to like 
cherry pick a handful of things and then we have these lip liners here or they look like lip pens i think these might be matte or satin finish i'm not sure exactly and then we have some new lip maximizers i love these they're always great uh, i believe these lip maximizers are going to be limited edition just the shades i'm sure they're fantastic i mean they're always great it's just a question of like which shade do you want and then my favorite category, the nail polish. Now, what's interesting is I see the shade called Pink Sakura, which actually came out in the spring release, which was not released here in Canada. So I guess this means that I get to pick up Pink Sakura for the summer collection. Whatever, I don't care. I think all of these colors look great. Again, I wanna see what these look like actually like on human flesh, but I don't know if I would buy all five of these, but I might. I think they look fantastic. I hope that they all stay in the permanent collection so I can just like gradually buy all five, but they just, they just really look really nice. I like the dark blue, I like the pink, I like the coral, even the nudie colors could be interesting. I don't know, I'm not usually a nudie nail polish girl, but I could be persuaded with this release here. So for me, the Dior Summer release is a wee, but I will be picking and choosing select items from the collection. Moving on, we have the fall collection from Dior. How did we get this far in advance? I don't know. So apparently, these two palettes here were supposed to come out last fall but if you remember last fall Dior did not release a fall collection and they are just pushing it for this year so that is how we have these sneak peeks right here so we only have photos of the palettes i am assuming i could be wrong that there will be like an entire collection like we just saw for the summer release I think that both of these palettes look really great. I love the color story for both of these. I think they both look like fall foliage. The colors definitely look like fall. I love the motif. It, at first I thought it was leaves, but I think it might be feathers. It just looks beautiful. I would imagine that this is the same beautiful new formula that we've been seeing from Dior. Personally speaking, I am more drawn to the more green palette simply because I have a lot of red and sort of purpley brown shadows. But once we see swatches roll in and I clearly have time to decide if I want one or both of these palettes for the fall collection. But I think just off the bat, first initial is we. I think this looks fantastic. It looks great. I can't wait to see what else we see from Dior this year and for their collections. This is a big we for me for their fall release. All right, moving on to some Burberry. Now, this is an eyeshadow palette that's been out for a little bit. Um, I've seen some people review it. This is the Burberry Runway Eye Palette. Now, this looks great. I've seen swatches. It looks beautiful. It looks like it has a lot of payoff. It looks good quality. The only little qualm that I have is that it is a pretty large palette. It's nine shadows, which we all know I'm not really partial to. However, this just looks like it has a really beautiful finish and formula. And I think when you first see the palette just like that, it kind of just looks like, okay. But as you see them swatched, they just look really beautiful and buttery. I'm still on the fence about this. I'm hoping that I can maybe see some Burberry makeup on the Sephora site, on their upcoming Sephora sale. That would be like the thing for me. Like if I see this on sale, I definitely will get it. Um, I think I just need that little push to purchase this palette here. So it's like a wee in theory, but it's a non merci in practicality for the moment. Now we have something else here from Dolce & Gabbana. Now they're coming out with these complexion items and the packaging, I think when I first saw this packaging last year, for some reason I wasn't like wowed. I don't know what happened, but the more I look at the Dolce & Gabbana packaging, the more I'm like, that's beautiful. I love the blue and white and red and yellow. Last year I didn't like it for some reason. I thought it was like too much, but now I actually really appreciate it. So they're coming out with a cushion compact foundation and they're also coming out with a cushion powder, like a loose powder cushion. I don't know what the trend is now, but we're seeing a lot of these cushion powders and a lot of cushion foundations as well. 
I don't really have any more information about the finish, the formula of this foundation here. This is supposed to be launching in July, which will be in a few short months. Um, so hopefully the shade range is inclusive and I'm not exactly sure what the finish will be, if it's a matte or a satin or luminous, etc. But I'm just curious to see um, these on the market, especially a loose powder cushion. I don't know, I'm really tempted. So this is a possible we for me. Now, moving on to Natasha Denona. She has a new palette out called Circo Loco, and this is so fun. When I first see this palette, all the colors, the first reaction is fun. Rainbow just, I don't know, just looks delightful. I am definitely very on the fence with this for a few reasons. First of all, it's a really big palette not really my jam. I prefer smaller ones or even singles when it comes to fun colors. Second of all, I have tried Natasha Denona eyeshadow in the past. It did not end well. I think I got the mini gold palette. It was not great. I had to return it. And I'm not exactly sure um, what the policies are for returning products at the moment. So while I really do appreciate the fun, bright, vibrant colors, you know, I've seen some swatches, the swatches do look promising. I think this would only be an item that I would get if it was heavily on sale, just because it's not something that I would definitely see myself using every day. I would use this a handful of times a year, possibly, but there are some colors there that do call my name. They're just really pretty and bright and fun. So we'll see. I think this is slowly coming out. I think there was some sort of issue with Natasha Denona and the release. I saw some bloggers posting about the photos, like the promo photos, and then being asked by Natasha Denona to remove the promo photos. It's very confusing. There's a lot of launches that seem to be leaked before the companies want them to. It, I don't know. It's a thing. Um, but apparently this person was actually able to buy this palette at, in store at a Sephora. So I don't know what that's about. Natasha Denona, Circo Loco, probably a no merci, but it'll be a wee if I can get it on the Sephora sale. Now, moving on to Jaclyn Hill. She has a new makeup release on the Horizon. So she has this bronzer and highlighter duo compact. She has single highlighters and a loose sort of like illuminating highlighting powder. I first, when I saw the swatches of the single highlighters, I thought these were eyeshadows, but they're highlighters, which could double as eyeshadow. You know, it's makeup, do whatever you want with it. Um, the shade range looks very inclusive. Simply looking at the compact of the blush and highlighter, I think it looks really nice. I think it's aesthetically pleasing. I think it looks lovely. Um, I know that Jaclyn Cosmetics has had like some polemical issues in the past. I certainly hope that this goes off without a hitch for everyone involved. It just seems like that must have been really hectic for everyone involved. So I certainly wish Jaclyn Hill lots of success with this release here. I hope it goes off very smoothly. And yeah, I can't wait to see people using this. I don't think that this is a release for me. I think it looks lovely. I'm just, I don't know, while I can see these products and think that they look aesthetically pleasing, I'm not really sure if it's just like motivating me to spend my money right away. So this is like mm, a no merci for me, but maybe, I don't know, we'll see. And I believe that as I'm speaking, this collection is now available for sale at Ulta. Okay, moving on to some Pat McGrath. We have some new makeup from Pat McGrath and these are liquid lipsticks. Now I was surprised because I feel like we've seen a lot of like lip products, lip glosses, lipsticks, and eyeshadows from Pat McGrath, but I don't think I've ever seen a blush from her. And I saw that there was some buzz about a new release coming from her in the near future, and I thought, oh, it's going to be a blush probably. 
Nope, it's liquid lipsticks. This looks like it's a pretty concise shade range. It's not like 45 colors. You get one really dark red, you get like a couple of pinks, and then a lot of different nudes, which does remind me a lot of Pat McGrath. Like I think of, when I think of Pat McGrath, I often think of like the perfect nude lipstick for every skin tone. So, I'm sure that these will be great. You know, I have liquid lipsticks and I'm kind of like weeding myself off of them. Like I like them, I have a bunch, but I do love a classic bullet lipstick. I just find it's more hydrating and moisturizing. Although a liquid lipstick, there's always like, I don't know, how do I say this? There's an occasion for everything and sometimes you need a liquid lipstick. I just, I don't know if I really need any of these. If I see one of these shades that looks spectacular because a perfect nude lip is a really nice thing to have. So once I see some real life swatches, I might get one. I'm definitely not interested in buying all seven different colors. So you can buy the kit with all seven of these. That isn't for me, but depending on the swatches, I might buy one or two. So this is a Peut-être, that means maybe. So it's like, yeah, somewhere between a oui and no merci for me. Okay, moving on to some new makeup here from Burberry. I missed this one at first. So we are seeing a new cushion compact here from Burberry as well as a liquid foundation. Now we can see the swatches here and they look pretty disappointing. The shade range looks pretty abysmal. I mean, that's really disappointing to see. So the cushion will have six shades and the liquid foundation will have 12. So the shade ranges we're seeing on the arm here, these, that's it. That's the shade range for the liquid foundation. That's not that great. Um, the description of these foundations is that they're supposed to be radiant and moisturizing and all that jazz. I mean, that's nice, but you know, there's so much on the market. There's so many releases. Um, I'm not particularly wowed by this one here. I was definitely more interested in their eyeshadow palette than their foundations here. I have a bunch of foundations and I'm not really impressed. I'm not impressed with the shade range at all. And yeah, that's that. So this is probably a no merci for me. Okay, so moving on to a makeup release that I'm kind of like embarrassed by how excited I am. This is a new product launch here from Hermes and this is a blush line. Now we know that they've come out with some beautiful lipsticks in the past, but um, they're coming out with these blushes soon and they're coming out with makeup brushes as well, just like brush blushes and I want this so bad. You can also see in the promo photo here, they are selling or gifting, I don't know what, this little pouch and I think it looks amazing. I want a blush, I want a makeup brush, and I want the little pouch. Shut up and take my money! I don't know what I have to do to get all that. Um, I'm assuming that these will be incredibly expensive. Like if this, if, if a single blush from Hermes is $200, I wouldn't be shocked because their lipsticks are so expensive. If this, like, yeah, like there's no amount that would shock me at this point from this brand. So I'm hoping that if I buy a blush, then I'll get like a little leather pouch here, but I'm not exactly sure. I definitely want to see some more swatches because I've seen some that look very fair and light. And you know, I'm not making any delusions here. I would love this blush to be fantastic, but even if it doesn't change my life completely, I'm still going to buy one. I'm not exactly sure which color to get. I'm going to wait and see, but yeah, I'm really, really excited about this. This is definitely a wee for me. Okay, moving on to some Guernet. So this is March now, so the brands are coming out with their like summer releases very shortly. We have a new terracotta collection here from Guernet, but this is just the terracotta bronzer. And we have these six lovely bronzers with a new terracotta brush. The pack, like the promo here, looks great. It reminds me of the beach. She looks like she has um, some bronzer that was dumped on her shoulder, but it looks like it's freckles from the sun. The whole shtick, I am here for it. Now, do I actually need a new bronzer? 
Absolutely not. Um, I think that the packaging, like the shell of the bronzer looks nice. I just, I don't know. Like I'm not super wowed by this immediately. I might get it. I'm just not exactly in the summer makeup mood right now. Maybe in a month or two when it starts to get a little bit warmer and I feel the need to wear more bronzer, then I will justify a new bronzer purchase. So this is a non merci for me right now, but you know, ask me again in a month and a half and it might be a wee. Now, moving on to some Fenty makeup. So this is a little bit confusing. I thought this was a new range of foundations. I was wrong. This is a all over body bronzer. It's makeup specifically for your body. So some sort of like blurring bronzer effect for your entire body, your arms, your legs, your chest, etc. You know, I am just not that girl. I wear makeup on my face. If I am going to the beach or something, I am a mermaid. I'm in the water the whole time. Y you know, this is just not a product for me. Like not every release is for everyone. And this is simply not for me. This is called the blurring body tint. It's supposed to enhance your skin and it's supposed to be a light to medium coverage. There's a very inclusive shade range. Of course, it's Fenty. You know, if you're someone who likes body makeup, I know some women like to wear it on their décolleté, on their shoulders, etc. in the summer, this might be for you. And this could be a good product to use instead of like fake tanner, just to give yourself some color. This isn't for me and that's okay. It's for someone else. Someone will see this and fall in love. But for me, it's a no merci. Okay, so moving on to something that's a wee for me, we have these new eyeshadows here from Urban Decay. So they have these single eyeshadows and these liner slash eyeshadow pencils. And I think that this whole release looks great. I love the clear packaging with these bright, fun colors. I am definitely more partial to smaller palettes or even individual palettes, especially when it comes to these really bright, fun, colorful shadows. You know, sometimes it's kind of hard to use up a 12 pan of just blue eyeshadow. So it's fun to just get individual ones. So these are currently available in the US and in Canada, we will get these in April. I am definitely interested in testing them out, especially the super fun blue eyeshadow. I love a blue eyeshadow, so I hope that the shadow sticks are really good. Sometimes shadow sticks crease on me regardless of how much primer I use, but this is a wee for me on this collection here. Now we have something here from Estee Lauder, which I haven't seen in a while. You know, I like Estee Lauder as a brand in theory, but I haven't actually seen any of their new makeup in a while. So this is a limited edition blush. So this is a limited edition pure color envy blush. It's also supposed to be a universal shade that's going to flatter all the skin tones. It's a cream to powder formula with a soft matte finish. I'm interested to see what the texture is like. Like, is it spongy? Is it moussey? Is it soft? I'm intrigued. I think the packaging is lovely. I think the rose motif on the inside is very extra and I'm here for it. I don't think this is for me. You know, I like limited edition products. They're kind of like collectibles, but I just don't really feel inspired to collect this one here. So this is a no merci for me. Okay, we have a new brow product here from Huda Beauty. What is this called here? It's called Balm Brows, fantastic. So it's a ultra fine, ultra realistic balm brow. So the pencil here is just incredibly thin. It's 0.9 millimeters. So it's really just like one of those hair-like stroke products. I do really appreciate a very fine brush like that. There are several colors, which is good, but I'm thinking of brands like Benefit Cosmetics, which is like often my go-to brow brand, and they have a lot more shades, I think, and also Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm just curious how different this will be to the stuff I already have, like the ultra fine, pencils that I have from Benefit, even from Dior. They're both super fine and they both do the job. So I'm wondering how this will be different from everything that I already have. Maybe the texture is different. Maybe the color is slightly different, but I mean, it looks great. It looks really straightforward. So 
this is a no merci for now but like a we oui in theory like i'm sure it's a great product okay last but not least we have something here from carolina herrera i have not bought anything from this brand makeup wise um so they're coming out with these new liquid lipsticks and I have to say, the packaging looks 10 out of 10. I love the red with gold. I think it looks very luxury, very extra. And each liquid lipstick comes with a detachable gold piece. So you have three options. You have a lion, a beetle, or a turtle, and you can actually buy them separately. So you can buy all three of these um, detachable pieces if you want. You can like customize your lipstick. You can mix and match. I'm here for it. I'm here for how extra this is. So in the vinyl liquid finish, there will be seven shades. And for the corduroy liquid finish, there will be 13 shades. For the more matte formula, I'm seeing lots of red, some deep plummy, and a couple of nude. And then for the vinyl glossy formula, it looks like a lot of pink. I mean, there's some red in there, but also a lot of pink and berry colors. I'm sure that these will be lovely. Do I need more liquid lipsticks? Probably not, but I do give this extra points for being so extra. Once I see some more swatches, I might be persuaded, but I think this is a no merci for me. Again, extra points for being so extra, but you know, just, I don't really need this. What's interesting is so far this year, we haven't seen anything from Chanel in the Le Beige category. Normally, we would have had sneak peeks by now. When I'm thinking to this time last year, we'd already seen some promo photos and I haven't seen any yet the day that I'm speaking today, March 8th. There might be some promo photos by the time that I post this video, but there might not. Things are a little bit different this year for multiple reasons. So I think we can expect releases to come a little bit slower and just be different this year. So leave a comment down below. Let me know which collections you said we oui or no merci to. Leave a comment. Tell me what you're planning on buying. I love these types of videos because I love to see what's coming out next. Even if I don't plan on buying it, I just like to see what's on the horizon. What are my options? Like what should I be budgeting for? What should I be planning to spend my money on? That sort of thing. So for those of you who are new to my channel, I talk about nothing but luxury and beauty. And I know that a lot of you who watch my videos are not actually subscribed to my channel. So I would really appreciate it if you would just take the time to subscribe to my channel and make sure your notification bell is set to on as well. Because YouTube does this funny thing where you can subscribe to someone's channel, but that doesn't mean that they will actually notify you when they post a video. So just do those things. It really encourages me and helps me out on my channel. So I think this is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.